What was the first big purchase you remember ever making? Something that you invested your time, effort, and energy into all on your own. Remember that for me, it was my, my first bike that I paid for myself, right? It was, it was called a Huffy Stone Mountain. And this thing was in my head, perfect and gorgeous. I had scrapped and tried so hard to, to come up with the money to buy my very own bike. And, and you know, wheeling it out of that Toys R Us, I felt on top of the world. My head had all these great ramps and jumps that we were gonna build as we kind of got into everything. And uh, the, the two things I really remember about the bike is number one, it had this really rad like green fork on it. And number two, that green fork was the only good thing about it. The rest was a disaster, right? Like I could never find a gear. The brakes only started to stop you after they had heated up so much that the nasty hard plastic decided that it was gonna give way to the rims. Like it was awful. It was a disaster. But I tried again. And that next time, I at least knew what I didn't want. And that next bike, it was called a Giant, was the brand Iguana. And man, I rode that thing hard, like into the ground. I loved that thing. It was amazing and it taught me so much about what biking could be to the point that I kind of, my riding outgrew that and I purchased uh, my, my third bike and, and was all over it. And this time I went from knowing what I didn't want to actually knowing what I wanted in a bike. Now. I could have stopped with that, with that stone mountain huffy that was just a nightmare, but I would have missed out. I would have missed out on, on so much. Biking is a part of who I am, and to think that that could have stopped because of this one bad experience is hard. And then there was my drum set. My drumming career is a fabled legend, I know, I know, but, but where I, I invested and invested in this thing, whether it be the first little kit that I had or then the second one that I just kept adding on to and upgrading and thinking that, that the upgrades would make me sound better and, and all this stuff, but the reality was is I just didn't enjoy playing. And so I would add more stuff. And in the final chapter of my drumming career was to sell the drum set for a kayak. My relationship with drumming wasn't so great, but boy, my, my relationship with kayaking started out a career and it was so fun. But have you ever had an experience like that, an experience of joy or, or remorse about something that you have purchased? I think we've all been there, but sometimes the risk of investment is not worth it. You know, we need, I needed to take a hard look at my drumming and realize that that investment wasn't worth it. It wasn't life-giving. I wasn't good. And I didn't have the time, effort, or energy to put into it. So I had to move on. However, if I would have stopped at that first letdown dream bike that I had, I would have missed out on a whole lot. Like I said, biking is a part of me. I love it. And still today, I love riding. Today, we're continuing on our walking in the light conversation with a focus on investing in relationships. And not to put too fine a point on it, but people are always worth the risk of investment. You're gonna hear that from time to time today. Now, previously we've mentioned that each and every one of us has a pulpit and that daily we are preaching some kind of good news from that pulpit, hopefully something that's life giving to us, right? And the risky business of investing in those relationships allows us to extend the reach and the voice of our pulpit to places that we may never set foot. And that the, the good news that we're proclaiming will continue long after we're gone through the relationships that we invest in. Investing in relationship is always worth it because we have been shaped for relationship. We are wired for relationship and our legacy depends on the relationships that we build that will well outlast us. And so let's look at our scripture today. Now it's a familiar parable about discipleship and, and much focus has always been spent on talking about the condition of your heart being like the soil so that the seeds that the farmer throws out, the farmer being God, you know, uh, may, may take root and might grow. And Today, I wanna to take a little bit different angle at this scripture. So let's pause and think about this from God's perspective for a minute. 
God is, is out in the field sowing seeds everywhere, and the seeds of discipleship fall on all kinds of soil, and only about one-fourth end up producing a crop. How do you think that farmer feels about all that work and all that sweat only to have three quarters of the seeds not come to fruition? Probably frustrated, right? You know, no matter the reason, the investments that God made to be in relationship with us don't live up to the full potential sometimes. Now, this isn't a message of shame, okay? So just hear me out, but, but think, would you give up or keep going at this point? Well, good news for us is that God continues on. God continues to make a way and invest in each and every one of us because God knows that people are always worth the risk of investment. Also, when a relationship does take root, when it is healthy, transformation can take place and there can be exponential growth. We've each, every single one of us, been made in the image of God. In part, this means that we've been shaped for relationship, that God is all about relationship. And it's clear that the Trinity and early parts of our scripture point to the fact that we have been shaped to be with one another too. We've been shaped for relationships by God. God has gone above and beyond to keep the means of relationship open to us and modeled what investing in people looks like throughout the totality of scripture and most clearly through the person of Jesus. God has shaped our hearts to be in relationship with one another. But um, it's not just being shaped by relationship that we've, we've been made for, but, but also our biology is wired to be in relationship with one another. Now, there are a ton of studies out there that kind of point to this, but I want to share one with you from 1938. It's a Harvard study. Um, and here, 268 sophomores at the time in 1938 were, were studied, they were evaluated and monitored in all kinds of different ways. And, and this longitudinal study was trying to find out what led to a long and healthy life. And the study concluded that the people who were happiest with their relationships when they were 50 turned out to be the healthiest when they were 80. Isn't that powerful? Our biology and physiology change when we continue to invest in relationships. People are always worth the risk of investment because our personal health depends on it. So we've been shaped by God and we're wired for relationship. And as we look at that, you know, our, our physical benefits start to start to show in our, our age and in the way that we live and all of that. But also our legacy depends on us continuing to spread the seeds of relationship. Now, as we come to the final point of, of importance of relationships today, I want to be clear that when we talk about investing in relationships, I don't mean that we continue to go back to harmful, abusive, or unhealthy places or people, okay? Dust the, the sand off your sandals and walk on. But rather, you know, I, th- I think that like my drum set, there is a time to, to part ways, you know, with those unhealthy relationships. But what this does mean to to invest in relationships, what it does mean is that we don't let the past relationships that have fallen on rocky soil make our hearts so hard to invest, to investing in other relationships that it harms our future. Because sometimes after hurts, we'll kind of replace that compassion with indifference or empathy with cynicism. It's what the Bible almost sometimes refers to as having a hard heart, right? And when we do this, we isolate ourselves from others, isolate ourselves from the world. And yeah, it protects from future hurts, but it also means that we miss out on life-changing relationships. And so to to illustrate this for our final piece, I wanna turn to the Apostle Paul. Paul spread seeds of discipleship and relationships throughout the, the whole world of the early church. Many of his letters are relational and compassionate to individuals or to churches. And these letters and churches wouldn't have been planted if he decided just to close up shop after a few beatings or, or being chased out of town. Paul pressed on. And when others would reject him, uh, he dusted the sand off of his sandals. He could have become jaded when his investments only returned anger and threats. But he would dust himself off from one group. And, And while it was painful, he would be willing to try again. Because Paul knew that people were always worth the risk of investment. And then one day, he met Timothy. 
after rejection after rejection, Paul kept investing then in Timothy and he came into his life at just the perfect time that Paul could place the mantle of leadership upon him and that the legacy of Paul could be lived through Timothy. Timothy was an answer to prayer and persistence. Timothy made all the rocky and shallow relationships worth it because the people are always worth the risk of investment. And Timothy made it so that Paul's life could live past him. And so as we close, I encourage you to think about where are the scars of your past investments keeping you from investing in someone today? I know that's a heavy question. And then who might you take a step to deepen your relational investment with in this season? Maybe your spouse or your kids, a new friend, a longtime companion, or even a stranger that you just met. What, what, you know, what ways can you talk through these things this week in a way that lives to health and life and relationship? And if you want to talk to somebody, there are people that are all around you. Just let us know and we'll help you talk through some of these things, some of those past hurts or scars so that we can then open ourselves up to that life-giving gift of new relationships. And so my prayer is that this week you may be open to planting new seeds by prayer, that God might then keep you mindful, that you have been shaped for relationships, wired to connect with others, and that your legacy depends on knowing that people are always worth the risk of investment. Thank you guys so much for being here. Let's pray. Wonder working God, keep us open to what you have in store for us. Remind us that we are shaped by your relational pull, that we are wired for one another in community, and that, God, our legacy depends on those connections that will outlast us. God, in all that you do and all that you are, allow us to participate in bringing your kingdom here as we walk in the light, living lives that preach. Amen.